She's always felt, you know, this is what I'm for, this is my duty. And I think you have to remember how she learned about this. Well, you know, she, she was apprenticed to her father, who she adored. When you see how this man, who was never supposed to be king, coped with the worst crisis in this country's history, abdication. putting on a brave face, well, abdication and then war, and being die bombed in his own home, and seriously thinking at any minute he was going to be invaded, that his whole family were going to be wiped out, and yet here he is every day, putting on his uniform, putting on a brave face, getting through it. I mean, that old cliche, keep calm and carry on, I mean, it really is, it's sort of, it is an unofficial royal more so, and it's certainly one that she's stuck to. So do you think that her, her constancy, her ability to endure, her um, kind of stoicism was forged uh, in those early years with her father and through the Second World War? Yeah, I think the war played an absolutely key part, as did the abdication. The abdication taught her that you have your royal duty, and if you put that duty to one side, bad things follow. I think that's, that was the sort of message she learned as a young girl. And then in the war, she just you know, absorbed the fact that, that you know, people make huge sacrifices and that as, as, a, as part of a royal family, you, know, you have to make your own sacrifices. She uh, also wanted to contribute to the war effort, right? She didn't just sort of sit back and be a princess. Windsor's sort of surrounded by, um, there's a garrison there and they, they sort of play a part in the social life of the castle. Uh, and it's very sweet actually. She, discovered quite early on in the war that a lot of the officers that had been stationed there, that they got to know, you know, they'd be invited up to the castle for drinks or dances or whatever, and then they started dying. And, and she made a point of um, always writing to the next of kin of those officers herself. No one asked her to do it, she just sort of did it. Um, and soon she's aware that her contemporaries are starting to, obviously, uh, you know, boys of her age are going off to fight, but girls of her age are, are, are in uniform and they're starting to do things. And she wants to do that, she wants to play her part. And the king is initially quite wary, you know, he thinks, well, hang on, I'm not sure about this, you know, she, she's a princess, you know, we've got to do sort of princessy kind of things. And she does, she wants to get her hands dirty. And she, she does, I mean, she's the only monarch probably in history who can strip the gearbox on a four-ton truck. <laughs> she trained as a mechanic. She trained as a mechanic and a driver uh, in Camberley. The nation surged round Buckingham Palace to rejoice with their king and their great war leader, Winston Churchill. But uh, no, the Queen looks back, you know, with, with justifiable pride, I think, on those years. Mm -hmm. uh, particularly now, because she's the only head of state in the world today who actually wore uniform in the Second World War. I think it was a real sense of kinship with that wartime generation. Mm -hmm. What was the most surprising thing you learned about the Queen in writing your book? I think what well, the thing that really struck me is she doesn't panic. Whatever the, however grim the situation is, whether it's as a girl seeing a doodle bug V1 bomb coming overhead thinking it might land at any minute, whether it's as a young Queen, whether it's when she was being sort of shot at in the Mall on Trooping the Colour in 1981. <laughs> whether it was uh, bombs going off around her in Northern Ireland in the 70s. She, she just doesn't panic. And I think that's, that's you know, a monarch, it's quite a useful attribute. There could be a secret to her success, one of the secrets one, to her success. One, I think it is. The country castle was heavily damaged by fire. You talk to people around her, particularly the people who were with her in that, in that sort of bleak five-year period in the mid-90s, when, when the castle's on fire and the marriages are falling apart, the headlines are relentlessly awful, you know, then, the people around her then just say, well, she, you know, she would still try and see the positives, would still uh, put a smile on. I mean, you know, just uh, within a couple of hours of returning from Windsor Castle, seeing her home, her seat, everything sort of going up in smoke, um, and her staff sort of came out on the steps at Buckingham Palace, all very mournful, thinking, what on earth do we say to her? And she just got out of the car and went, well, we managed to save the pictures. So, you know, that's the sort of attitude she had. It was, you know, crisis, look at it like a storm. Yeah, it's going to be awful, batten down the hatches, get through it, and the sun will come out eventually. That's her philosophy.